book review first. In this video, we're just looking at the big picture. I always start big picture. Now, typography maybe isn't big picture, but as I mentioned, when you set up layout and then if things aren't looking good, then you change the type, things change again, then you go back to layout. So I always like doing typography first, then big layout, and then slowly working my way to like more and more, like all the different smaller pieces of my layout which we often call components. We have a, a few different components on this page. We have our widget component, our featured article component, and our recent article component um, is sort of how I'm going to break this page down the same way when we were doing our markup, how I looked at it. So we need something that's going to hold the page in the middle, and then we need that to have two different columns on it, and we need to set those two columns to have the right sizes on them. A few decisions that have to be made now about uh, a few different things. Now, one thing that we've already done, if we scroll down and we find where we did our layout, we already created a container. So that's pretty cool because that means our content here is already inside of a container. It's already being held within the same place because when we created this, we gave it that same container. So if I go really, really big now, I can't go in my content will stop growing at one point, which is awesome. So we don't have to worry too much about the, com the container itself. The first thing I'm going to worry about is setting up those two columns though. So in my layout, if we come back actually, and we should look at our index, you're always going to be jumping back and forth between the two of them, unless you have a really good memory for your classes. Um, we had my main and my main is all my main articles. And then we had an aside right there. And then all my aside is that secondary widget on the side. And all of that is living inside of this container. Now the container, I don't want to give it a display flex because I might get other content inside of a container that I don't want to have a display flex on. So that's the same reason I had my container and my container nav here. And when I did that, it's because I wanted to make this container have a display flex on it. Now, what I'm realizing is I'm coming and I want to do the same thing here. So having container nav here wouldn't make a lot of sense. I could call it container main or main content, but why not come and give it a class like container flex? And the idea here is I have a container, but I'm also making this container a flex box. If I do container flex there, and then I come up here and I change this one, the reason I'm changing that one now is because I'm going, oh, well, I want these two to have the exact same behavior. I might as well give them the exact same class. It, this might not work in every situation you run into, because if you remember when we did this, we had display flex, but we also had this justify content space between. In this case, that's a good thing. It's exactly what we want because we want to push our two things as far apart as possible. So container nav display flex, that's fine. So we can just change this from nav to container flex. And that means anytime we have a container, we need a display flex on with this justified content space between we can use this class and we're modifying so we have a normal container if we need it. And we can take that a step further when we want to with this modifier of that original container. Now technically, and a lot of places will just call this like flex, or it'd be like a flex class, right? It'd be flex and you might add something to the name to indicate that it's also doing this. Or if you really get into something called atomic CSS, it would have like a D, you'd have literally D flex, which would just be display flex. Then you could have something that else is just justify content that just applies justify content. I'm personally not a fan of doing that. Um, but I think you, you could just call it flex if you think you'd use this for a whole bunch of reasons. I tend to do more this type of thing personally but one thing with css and css naming conventions there's about a million different approaches to it so i'm throwing a few ideas out there i'm going to stick with this one for now if we work through our project sometimes you end up running into a situation where maybe you end up changing the name again now part of css is planning things ahead but it's really hard to do when you're a complete beginner so i want to show you the type of things that you might run into if you've planned things out really well from the beginning because you've made a hundred sites and you can analyze the design really well right from the get-go you might not need to be making these things or you might realize i always need to have something like this and right from the beginning you're always giving yourself some sort of flex class that just has like these basic settings on it that you can use whenever you need it simplify your life as much as possible and we go take a look at our layout now we should have two columns now everything's a little bit broken because my images are huge so we can see though we have two columns that's amazing we're almost finished, honestly, with the big layout. Now, the two big things that we need to go through and fix right now are the image sizes, and it's really going to help. And then we can set our column sizes as well. I'm going to go all the way up to the top where my body is. And right after that, I'm going to put my image here. I find this a really like global, generic thing. It doesn't really fit into layout. It's definitely not part of typography. It's just sort of my general thing that lives up here at the top. And I'm going to say max width is 100%. I'm also going to put a display of block on here. 
I'm doing it now, not to confuse you, but just to say, I remember when I said images are usually display inline, it does lead to this issue where there's a small, when some, when an image is display inline, which it is by default, um, it gets this little, little space underneath that I'm not going to worry about why that happens right now. But what, what it means is when you're setting spacing on them, it doesn't always line up exactly how you want it to. So a really, this is like every site you ever do, literally. <laughs> you might do something like this um, where it just solves 98% of the problems you'll ever have with an image. We have one other thing we're going to do to deal with the cropping on them. But this is just like if you're setting up your images, these two things will just make your life a lot easier. So I sort of recommend always having it's like body this image this and then you're done. So if we go and take a look now, hey, look, things have already gotten much, much, much better. I also made another mistake with my typography. We'll fix that uh, when we get to our widgets, though. The last thing I want to do is sort of set the proper sizes on those. So that was my main and my aside. So I'm definitely going to come down to my layout. Layout. Container is really sort of generic. Then I have my header. This is all a header. We might as well go right here. I have my navigation. I have this in its own category. I might, you know, depending on how you want to work, you might keep your navigation up here with your header stuff because the navigation's in there. I'm just going to come right here and say my main. And we have my aside. I want you to set some sizes on this, see how it can look, and see if we end up agreeing on the sizes we're going to put on this. All right, so on my main on this one, I'm going to put a width of 75%. And on my aside, I'm going to give this a width of... 20%. Now let's go take a look. That might look a little bit wider than what we needed to be, but that's okay. Um, I think overall we're, we're sort of hitting where we, what we need and what it, we want it to look like. So you can see it's working. Now we do need to build a breakpoint into this as well, right? Because, oh man, that sucks when we get to the small screens. Oh, oh no, there, there's a problem with my navigation. I want you to try and fix it and see what it is. See if you can figure out what it is because we, we had the right code, but now there's an issue. See if you can solve it. Did you find it? <laughs> this is um, finding little changes, whether it's a typo or just sort of running through things quickly and trying to find uh, issues is a really, really good skill to have. It's something you can get pretty good at. Typos are like spelling color wrong <laughs> or just setting the wrong property on something, spelling direction, but you mix up the C and the T. Things like that can cause a lot of problems. Now, in this case, that's not exactly what it was, but it's because I, I renamed my container Flex, but in my media query, I never redefine that and change the name here. So remember, we had container nav, we changed it to container Flex. I need to do that here too to make sure that it's working. And hey, look at that. We have that working wonderfully, but we've run into a problem of we still have the wrong widths on things. Now, these are using something called max width instead of min width. And I mentioned that we sort of want to be doing a mobile first approach to things instead of working from the big screen to the small screen. It generally makes your life a lot easier. You end up writing less CSS because the defaults are a bit more of your friend. So in the next video, we're going to explore how we can switch our min widths to a max width and a little bit of refactoring we can do. And then you're going to see how much easier it just makes it. So we're not overwriting as much. We can write a lot less code.